Alright, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. Yeah, I do hope you lot are all doing so well and welcome to today's video, which is a match preview of Chelsea's home game against Liverpool in the Premier League. It is the fire rubber of the weekend in the Premier League fixtures and you know what? Chelsea have a chance here. Liverpool might be the informed team in England and indeed maybe Europe at the moment, but both teams in Chelsea and Liverpool are coming off European losses respectfully. Chelsea obviously lost 1-0 at home to Valencia and Liverpool lost 2-0 to Napoli. And this could be a really interesting contest for a multitude of reasons which I'm gonna get into in this video but before we get into the content I do want to request that you guys subscribe to this YouTube channel if you are new to the channel and if you are please do hit the bell notifications icon because I upload content every single day to this channel and I want you lot to catch up and if you want to do me a favor please like the video guys thanks a lot all right then this game is interesting for a bunch of reasons and before I open the analysis screen and actually reference the Super Cup as I think that's probably the most relevant way of looking at this matchup even though formations might come into it so I'm gonna bring that up in a second but I want to talk about a few things Frank Lampard said in his pre-match press conference unrelated to this match in particular but I do want to comment on what Frank Lampard said when he was asked to comment on Callum Hudson-Odoi signing his new five-year contract Frank is obviously very very pleased but when he was asked about Callum's perhaps wanting away the Bayern Munich staff. He said, look, that all came before me. All I know is I arrived at Chelsea. I said to Callum, you're incredibly important to me. You're definitely in my plans. And I guess soon after they started negotiations for a new contract and now it's all been agreed and he's penned a five year deal. Lampard obviously thinks that's great, but he says, look, now the hard work starts. I know he's a very, very talented player, but he's signed the deal now. He's a Chelsea player and he's got a knuckle down, which all sounds great. Some more important stuff that Frank talked about in this press conference was he talks about the Mason Mount injury. He says, look, it's nothing serious. When you look back on the replay, it does look horrendous. I remember I was in the stadium. I couldn't really see how bad it was, but then I saw the, the images of that tackle from Cochrane, and it did look rather horrendous. It swelled up a lot, but they strapped it up and it does look like there's no long-term damage. And he could even feature in this game against Liverpool. Frank said he's not sure. He has to decide on the day or the day before. But I think that's just sort of cliche management, I don't know, gamesmanship to not maybe give away too much to the opposition coach. But there's a chance he'll play. And in terms of potential players that could return even in this game, uh, players who have returned to training are Golo Kante, Emerson, Antonio Rudiger. These players returning to training is huge and if these guys featured in this game, that would be absolutely massive. Lampard commented on how it was a miracle how well Kante performed in Istanbul against Liverpool when he was that injured and he says if he could do something similar without damaging his injury or aggravating his injury further we'd be interested in doing that. He reiterated how exciting and happy he is to be working with N'Golo Kante which is something he's maintained ever since being appointed Chelsea manager and actually said when he worked as a pundit how amazing he is and how he'd love to coach him. So hopefully he's ready to play. Anyway I want to talk a little bit about how this game might go and like I said before I want to reference the Super Cup performance against Liverpool because Chelsea played so, so well. So on that, I'm going to bring up the who scored statistics from that game on the analysis page. Right, so obviously this game ended 2-2 before it went to penalties. There's a bunch of stuff to talk about, but Chelsea played what looked more like the conventional Sarri 4-3-3 with a bit of a Frank Lampard twist. The midfield consisted of Jorginho, Kante and Kovacic starting in a 4-3-3. Now that offered immense defensive solidity in this game, certainly for the 4 Free, free. Um, obviously, after that game, Chelsea looked incredibly frail in that formation before they switched to the free back system. But with this personnel against that Liverpool side, it looks like it works incredibly well. Now, I'm not saying Frank Lampard's going to revert back to this, but if he does indeed have N'Golo Kante fit, I have a sneaking suspicion he might try this again as it worked so, so well. Now, as you can see on the graphic next to me, who scored actually generated a higher rating for Chelsea than Liverpool in this game. 7.11 as opposed to Liverpool's 7.09. Sure, it was marginal, but I think Chelsea did just edge it over the entirety of the game before they went to penalty. Penalties. Now, Pulisic was especially brilliant in this game, playing on the shoulder and getting in behind Liverpool, and I would love to see that again. Obviously, he's been rested of late and he hasn't played m many minutes, so I feel like he will be brought back into this game, and because he was so, so effective in the Super Cup, 
I know this is just speculating and I've been wrong before with my speculation, but to me, it would make so much sense to play Pulisic on that left wing role, certainly start him and try and get in behind that Liverpool back line. Obviously Giroud started in the Super Cup and he got a goal, a good goal, and maybe that would work again. Because this is the Premier League and Tammy Abraham's the sort of designated Premier League number nine, I would not be surprised at all if Tammy Abraham started this game, but if from a sort of pragmatic, speculative approach, doing pretty much the same thing as he did in the Super Cup would make a lot of sense for me. Now, I could be completely wrong if Frank Lampard could revert back to his back three system he's used for the last couple of games. Now, that didn't work out against Valencia, and again, I was at that game, and for me, it was a really toothless performance with a lot of benign wing play, wing back play. That didn't really do anything, um, and if Emerson is indeed fit, I feel like Chelsea should revert back to the back four, hopefully have the centre-back pairing of Tomori and Rudiger if fit and ready. So Rudiger and Emerson returning to that back line for me should dictate a back four system. And again, it was so successful in the Super Cup, why not have a midfield three of Jorginho, Kovacic and Kante to offer that good ball progression yet defensive solidity. Willian was probably Chelsea's most creative player last time at home against Valencia so either him or Pedro perhaps starting on the right wing um, and then Pulisic for me starting on the left wing with Mount maybe being introduced later in the game after Pulisic's running behind a bunch of times and got himself tired. Mount coming on with a lot of energy and creativity I think could be incredibly effective against Liverpool. So it's an interesting one in terms of playing up front. I would feel comfortable with Giroud starting because he played and scored against Liverpool last time out and he'll be rested and raring to go and Giroud is a known quantity and a quality player. If Chelsea aren't going to be running in behind all the time or if Pulisic's going to be that player running in behind, Giroud can be the player that combines with Pedro, the midfielders, and is the hold-up player and gets amongst the Liverpool back line. Kind of makes a lot of sense to me, but I would also totally understand if Frank Lampard just wants to continue with Tammy Abraham as his Premier League number nine. I guess that too would make a lot of sense. Jurgen Klopp played Gomez as fullback against Chelsea last time in the Super Cup, maybe for some more defensive solidity. Whether Andy Robertson would come back in to play with Trent Alexander-Arnold, I don't know. He may try Gomez again. I'm not actually entirely sure of his fitness, but that will be interesting because if he thinks Chelsea are going to be trying to get behind the back line a lot, they might sit back more and be a little bit more defensively pragmatic by Liverpool standards. Remember they are away as well and they have just come off a 2-0 loss. I think the most important thing to note here in terms of Liverpool's perspective, sure Chelsea might have been given a better rating in that Super Cup game over you know, the non-penalty play. What did change Liverpool's play completely is when Roberto Firmino came on. For me, Firmino is an absolutely world-class player. Not because he gets loads of goals or whatever, but how he supercharges his wingers, how he supercharges Mane and Salah. Mane obviously got the two goals last time out against Chelsea in the Super Cup, and he's been a man possessed of late. And when Firmino's on the pitch, he's even better. Obviously, Firmino didn't start that game against Chelsea, and that's when Chelsea had the better of it, but when he came on, the game changed, and you would probably imagine he will be starting this game against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, which kind of gives the whole game a very different complexion. Firmino is a false nine, and kind of plays in the hole, so it's not even about centre-backs occupying him. It really is your defensive midfield trying to you know, nullify him, which is easier said than done. That's why, you know, you think of both Kovacic and Kante next to Jorginho. That's the kind of midfield you need to sort of nullify that creativity from Liverpool, because really that's where all their threat comes from. If you can do as much as you can to stifle that part of the pitch, you have a chance, and then you can try and run in behind with the pace of Christian Pulisic, or even Tammy if he's playing as well. So, really, really interesting, and there's a few other points I want to talk about regarding this game. So it's been a useful reference point from last time out, but let's get rid of the analysis screen. This is kind of an interesting fixture in the sense of, I'm wondering who the pressure is on most here. Obviously, Frank Lampard is yet to get a home win as Chelsea coach, but he won't be expected to beat Liverpool in this game. You know, a club and a manager and plays in transition. And like I previously said, Liverpool are probably the form team in Europe, certainly in England. So they won't be expected to win. Liverpool have just come off a 
2-0 loss. They're absolutely going for the Premier League title and they'll see Chelsea as a very winnable fixture at the moment, but they're away. So is the pressure more on Liverpool? Or is this what you know something that they'd happily take a draw? Probably both sides might take a draw. But would Liverpool maybe prefer the points here? Do you think they are entitled to the points here? It's a very strange one to consider, but I think from Chelsea's perspective, there won't be that much pressure on Chelsea's shoulders. So therefore they can go out and express themselves a bit more. It's just really, really interesting. Personally, I think it will be really risky playing the back three system. Hopefully, if they do play it, I'll eat my words and it works really well against Liverpool. But for me, I would like to see Frank Lampard revert back to that tighter 4-3-3 with a defensive midfield and basically pace on the break. But hopefully, if the pressure is off, they can go out and express themselves. Maybe an early mistake from Liverpool might get them a little bit wobbly, but if you see that man Roberto Firmino starting, all the quality up front with Salah uh, Mane, it might be concerning. Like I said, it will be interesting to see if both fullbacks in Robertson and Trent Alexander-Arnold start. If they both do start, I know they switch sometimes in terms of flanks, but if they both do start, I'll feel a lot more comfortable about Pulisic running in behind if indeed Pulisic does start. Again, this is just what I'm speculating what would work in this fixture. If Mason Mount is fit, Frank Lampard just wants him to play all the time, he might just start him on the left wing and play that more solid midfield. But it does make you wonder about Christian Pulisic. Is he just gonna be integrated slowly or is there a problem with his training? But Frank Lampard talks positively about him just makes you wonder. Anyway, I want to know what you guys think about this game. Get in the comments below and let me know your thoughts of how you think the game will go. What formation do you think Frank Lampard will play? Do you think he'll play Pulisic? Do you think he'll play Mount? Let me know. Do you think he'll play Tammy over Giroud? Or do you think he'll bring Giroud back in for this game? Get down in the comments and let me know your thoughts on this game. And why not give me a score prediction as well? If you have enjoyed the video, gang, please do like this video. That would mean a lot to me. And remember, subscribe if you are new. We've just clocked over 17,000 subscribers, which I'm obviously elated about. I just started uh, my YouTube channel in the summer so I'm very very pleased with its positive progress obviously I'm starting a new FIFA 20 series as well with Chelsea career mode be sure to check that out I think you'll enjoy it uh, follow me on social media at football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter and other than that guys I am out you lot enjoy the football and I will see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living I'ma walk the walk outline my lines I rap through thought body bag the verse outline the chuck in my life seen trouble, hustle on the double, silence on the trigger like my pick, got a muzzle, yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble, I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby.